What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G to give you a better idea of what you can expect if you get it. Now of course, as the name suggests, this phone is the successor to last year's Samsung Galaxy A13 5G, and just judging by some of my previous videos, the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G was a fairly popular device, so I'm definitely looking forward to taking a look at this phone and really seeing what kind of changes Samsung has made. Now if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely subscribe to the channel, seeing as this is my first impressions video. I don't currently have a whole lot on it, but I will be making plenty of other videos about this phone. And for that matter, by the time you're watching this, they might already be out. So feel free to check the description because when they come out, I will be linking to other videos there. But with that being said, let's get into it. Now, before we actually take a look at the phone itself, let's take a look at what comes in the box. Now, these days, Samsung doesn't really include a whole lot with their phones, nor do really many other larger manufacturers. But at the bottom here, we do have a SIM card removal tool. And then in this little mini box thing, we got a quick start guide and a double-sided USB-C cable. So yeah, again, as you could see there, these days Samsung doesn't really put a whole lot in their boxes with their phones, but at least we got the essentials, so that's always good. But moving on to the phone itself, with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we got a 6.6 inch 90Hz PLS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 400, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. So compared to the A13 5G, and honestly most phones in this price range for that matter, this is a really nice display. At 6.6 .6 inches, it's a little bit larger than average, so if you're gonna be on your phone a lot doing stuff like reading, web browsing, maybe using social media, stuff like that, whatever you happen to be doing with a larger display of course, things are gonna be a bit easier to see. And with the 20 by 9 aspect ratio, we're getting a more immersive experience in landscape mode. So if you're doing stuff like watching videos, playing games, looking at photos, stuff like that, things are gonna look a bit more cinematic. And if you're doing something like web browsing or maybe scrolling through social media, with a taller and more narrow form factor like this, you're going to be able to fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. Now aside from all that, one area that's a huge improvement from the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G is the resolution. With a 1080p display versus only 720p with A13 5G, we are getting a really nice sharp image, and not only this, but the colors and brightness are also really good too. So in general, if you're looking for a really affordable device, this is going to be great for consuming all kinds of content like videos, photos, games. The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is going to be a great choice. Now for storage, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is getting 64GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, so in this price range it's pretty much average. On one hand, if you're really a power user, if you're constantly downloading all kinds of apps, photos and videos, stuff like that, then you might want to go with something like 128 but on the other hand, in this price range, honestly, you're probably really not going to do a whole lot better. So for what it is, I do think the 64GB we're getting here is at least pretty decent. But again, keep in mind, if you are more of a heavy user, you might want to consider spending a bit more and getting something a bit higher in that has more storage, because in that case, while 64 gigabytes is definitely at least acceptable for the average user, when you're putting all kinds of stuff on your phone, it still can fill up pretty quickly. Now for security features, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G does have face unlock, as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key, so really nothing's changed, and honestly at this point, pretty much any phone above $100 is probably going to have both a fingerprint scanner and face unlock, but all the same, having multiple options to unlock your phone besides a pin is always nice. But real quick, let's give the fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, for the front facing camera, we got a water drop notch design. This camera is 13 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So as far as features go, it's a pretty decent setup. Unfortunately, there's no ultra wide camera, which honestly at this point in 2023 is really too bad. An ultra wide camera is such a common and useful feature that I feel like in 2023, pretty much every phone should have one. I mean, they've been out for quite a while and I've seen hundred dollar phones that have one. So at this point, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why Samsung wouldn't include this feature. But aside from not having an ultra wide camera, we are getting a pretty good setup here. With the macro camera, you can get some nice close up detailed images. Images. And then of course with a 50 megapixel main camera and a depth sensing camera to help with portrait mode Although I haven't actually used the camera yet I am expecting this phone to have really good photo quality So in general if you're taking more casual photos, maybe for something like Instagram for example I do think you will be happy with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G But again keep in mind this phone does not have an ultra wide camera So if that is a feature you're looking for you are going to be disappointed here Now when it comes to RAM or processor with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G We're getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with the Exynos 1330 processor Now in general performance is another aspect of the A14 
5G, where I did notice a significant improvement from the A13 5G. Now, sure, on one hand, this is definitely not the fastest phone out there. I mean, this is a $200 phone, so you can really only expect so much. But that being said, for an entry-level device like this, I do think it is actually decently fast. Whereas with the A13 5G, I feel like that phone, for what it is, despite not being terrible, was still a little bit more on the slower side. So with the A14 5G for more basic activities, like web browsing, social media, watching videos every now and then, and maybe some light mobile gaming, for that kind of activity, I do think this phone is going to be perfectly fine, and for the most part, you will get a pretty good experience. That being said though, of course, if you're looking for something with more high performance, if you're going to be on your phone a lot, especially doing more demanding activities like high performance mobile gaming, in that kind of situation, yeah, you're probably going to want to get something like an A23 5G, or even an A53 5G, that's going to be a bit higher end, and quite a bit faster. But again, for more moderate use and more basic activities, I do think this phone will be plenty fast enough. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 5, and here are the results I got. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and then comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone's going to be a performance upgrade for you. Because depending on what you're coming from, it may or may not be. I mean, if you're coming from maybe something like a Samsung Galaxy S10 for example, then yeah, this phone is probably going to feel pretty slow. But on the other hand, if you're coming from maybe a Samsung Galaxy A13 5G, I do think this phone is actually going to be a pretty significant upgrade. So again, definitely run this test and see for yourself, but I feel like for the average user, if you are looking for a phone around this price range, then in general, performance-wise, compared to others like it, it is going to be one of the better options. Now for the battery, like pretty much any recent Samsung Galaxy A-series phone, the A14 5G has a 5000 mAh battery, so definitely a good battery here. In the US, this is pretty much the largest battery you can get in a smartphone, so you can expect to get some real good battery life and longevity here. So if you're in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger, but you still need to use your phone all day, in that kind of situation, the A14 5G is going to be a great choice, and even down the road, in addition to having plenty of battery life per charge as the battery degrades, which of course all batteries do, it's not going to wear out nearly as quickly as a smaller battery would. So if you like to get one phone and keep it for a longer time, the A14 5G is definitely going to be a great choice. The A14 5G also does support 15 watt fast charging, so on one hand it's definitely not the best fast charging in the world, especially compared to something like OnePlus that typically has 25, 30 watt fast charging. But in my experience, the charging speeds are at least decent, so it will get the job done. But keep in mind, of course, to actually charge this phone at full power, you will need a 15 watt charger. And since again, this phone doesn't come with a wall adapter at all, you will have to get one yourself. But overall, again, in my experience with the right charger, you can expect to get at least decent charging speeds here. Now this phone does come with the Android 13 straight out of the box. So that's definitely a great thing. And knowing Samsung software support, you can also also expect several other major updates with this phone in the future. So if you are looking for more of an entry level phone and getting the latest version of Android is important to you, then this phone is going to be a great choice and honestly in this price range, obviously this is going to change pretty soon I imagine. But again, so far at this point in 2023 and what is it, February? Samsung is really the only manufacturer releasing phones especially in this price range that have the latest version of Android. So that just really goes to show their software support is definitely good. So if that is more of a priority for you, then again, not even just this phone, but honestly just Samsung. Samsung in general is really going to be a great choice for you. Another cool thing about this phone is we are getting NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, then keep in mind you will be able to do that with this phone no problem. Now at this point in 2023, NFC is definitely not a rare feature really in any price range. I mean, I've seen $100 phones that have it, but at the same time, there's still a pretty decent handful of phones that don't have it. So again, just keep in mind, if you do want to use tap and pay, then with this phone, that's not going to be a problem. Now, taking a look at the overall design, to be perfectly honest, I'm not really a huge fan. On one hand, just looking at this, I feel like Samsung did try to make it a little bit newer and more interesting, which I'll give them credit for trying. But honestly, I feel like they just made this phone a lot more bulky than it needs to be. Sure, on one hand, in my opinion, I'm just used to larger phones in general. General, so it is pretty decently comfortable to hold, but the bezels are pretty thick. And again, compared to the average phone in 2023, this phone does kind of look and feel a little bit more bulky. So on one hand by itself, it's definitely manageable, but if you put a case on it, depending on what the case is, I could see it getting a bit awkward. And when it comes to the materials, they're not really my favorite. I do like the finish on the back. It's kind of cool and feels interesting, but at the same time, well, pretty much any phone in this price range is going to be made entirely of plastic too. Despite having decent build quality, the plastic on this phone just feels a little bit more on the cheap side. And the phone really doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it. So in general, on one hand, if you're just looking for decent build quality and you don't really care about aesthetics or really anything like that, then don't worry, this phone is going to be completely fine. But if you are expecting a more high quality premium kind of feel, kind of like the materials on a OnePlus phone, for example, then you might be a little disappointed here. But on the bright side, compared to the average phone in this price range, I feel like the A14 5G does look at least a little bit more unique. So while again, it's not really my favorite, it's definitely not the worst either. But in conclusion, my overall thoughts about the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. 
In general, I actually do have a pretty good overall impression here. Unlike a lot of manufacturers that seem to be going backwards with their newer phones, or at the very best staying the same. With the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, despite it not being like a night and day difference, nor would I even expect that, I definitely did notice some pretty nice improvements. Like for example, again, the 1080p display in this price range, while definitely not being rare per se, it's not something you see every day. I feel like most entry level 5G phones are gonna have only 720p displays. So if you are consuming a lot of content, then this is definitely gonna be a great thing. I was also happy with the performance. Again, compared to the A13 5G, I definitely think the A14 5G was quite a bit faster. And when it comes to these more entry level devices, that's definitely not always the case. So overall, if you're looking for a more affordable 5G phone that has a really nice display for consuming content, a decent amount of storage, a nice camera that takes really good photos, pretty good performance, a really large battery, the latest version of Android, and features like NFC, then in general, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is definitely worth considering. Now, once again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely subscribe to the channel because I will be making plenty of other videos about it in the future and keep in mind by the time you're watching this some of them might already be out so definitely check out the description too because i will be linking to a few of them there as well as some information about pricing availability and some of my favorite accessories but that's it for this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button don't forget to follow Kalipas tech on twitter and instagram and as always i will see you in the next video